Welcome to part 17 of basic training. Today we're going to go over everything you need to know to play London Loop on 150cc. If you don't want your hands to fall off, then I recommend using our usual try-hard build of Waluigi, Bitty Buggy, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider. When you load up the track, move the joystick to the right for a bit so that you can go slightly to the right when the run starts. Start a right drift around this first turn, and now you have two options. If your soft drifting's not that good, then you can just hang a hard right, build up a super mini turbo, and drive straight up to the next part of the track. However, if you soft drift around this turn, you can intentionally widen your drift angle a bit to build up the super mini turbo and then do two left hops into a right drift before tricking off this little planter, which will save about a tenth of a second or so. We'll come back to this section later in the video when we talk about the world record. The next few turns are nothing really special, just a mini turbo into a super mini turbo and then drive straight into the double decker bus section before starting a wide right drift. You want to time the release of that mini turbo so that you can grab the first coin and then start a left drift to grab the second coin. After that, we're just going to build up a couple more mini turbos before going into this gigantic shortcut. And the way we want to do it is kind of specific. Use your mushroom just before getting to the grass and then you'll get this little pocket of air. When that happens, hold down the drift button and right on the joystick and then use your second mushroom to clear the grass and build up a super mini turbo. Before moving on, if you're running the track without mushrooms, it's a little more complicated than just drive around the cut. You see this chain chomp? Unlike the Cheeseland chain chomp, this one seems to operate on a global cycle and you want to make sure to be well to the left hand side of the track to avoid it. Not only that, but there are three coins on the far left hand side of the track that we want to make sure and grab because coins can be pretty hard to come by on this track, and we need them to increase our speed as early as possible. Now assuming that we're running with mushrooms, after coming out of the shortcut and releasing your super mini turbo, we're going to trick off of the bridge, and then do a left drift to grab the two coins, and then, right when we get to the crosswalk, we're going to do a right hop into a wide left drift. This next strategy is kind of complicated, so let's break it down step by step. As you go around the left turn, you want to wait ever so slightly before tightening up your drift because this will angle you a little bit farther to the left. You see this ramp over here? We want a mini turbo trick off of it, but if we just start a right drift, we're more than likely going to hit the next wall when making the right turn. So what we want to do is start a right drift, intentionally bonk the wall to stabilize our line, and then tighten our drift angle just a bit to build up the mini turbo. Note that doing the mini turbo trick in this way saves maybe a tenth of a second or so over just drifting and tricking off the ramp without the mini turbo, so it's not the end of the world if you miss it. In either case, we are finally on to section 2, which thankfully is quite a bit less technical than section 1. After driving straight for a bit, wait until just before getting to the dirt path and then do a right hop into a left drift to grab coin 7. Then just take a kind of wide right drift on the dirt path before... Uh, the stair section. There's honestly kind of a lot going on here. First of all, we want to hold our Ultra Mini Turbo well into this turn, and we want to make sure to release it over this second little corner of grass. I don't know why, but for some reason, this causes the Chain Chomp to not attack you, which is nice because it will allow you to take a really tight line around the stairs. Now when you actually get to the stairs, make sure to hold a hard right all the way up them. If you're lucky, you'll get a little bounce, and then you can start holding a hard left while still in mid-air to finish charging the Ultra Mini Turbo. But if you're not lucky, then you'll have to keep holding right well past the corner to avoid bonking into the wall. Note that the world record does this a little bit differently because they're able to actually build up two super mini turbos in this section of the track, whereas we just built up a single ultra mini turbo. It should also be pointed out that the current shroomless world record tricks off the first set of stairs, but this can be really precise and really hard to get properly. The strategy that I provide is a little bit slower, but it's way more consistent. In either case though, once you get that ultra mini turbo, all you have to do is mini turbo around the next right turn, and then super mini turbo around the turn after that. After tricking off the ramp, we're going to build up a mini turbo around the next right turn, and then just start a left drift and basically just hold wide until building up the super mini turbo. Finally, to finish up this section of the track, we're just going to build up a mini turbo around the next right turn, and a super mini turbo around the last one. On to section 3 now, it's going to start the same as section 2, except that the chain chomp is roaming around now, and depending on your pace, you may or may not be able to drift around the inside of it. Unfortunately, you kind of have to just improvise here because he starts on the outside and works his way in, so you'll need to experiment with a racing line that works for your pace. No matter what you do though, you should be able to build up an ultra mini turbo around the right turn again, and don't do this extra mini turbo that you see me doing here. Instead, just drive straight for a bit, and then do a right hop into a left drift so that you can mini turbo trick off the fountain. I landed in a wide left drift here to avoid the walls. But you can also just wait until you get to the hill before starting left drift if you want to make sure to take a little bit of a tighter line. After coming around that turn, we're just going to drive straight all the way up this portion of the track. 
Now when you get to the top of the hill, do a left hop into a right drift. Now I'm gonna pause the video for a second here because the strategy you're about to see is actually a lot more complicated than it looks. As you can see, we're back at the mushroom cut from section one, but if you'll recall, we needed two mushrooms to get through here and now we only have one. What we're gonna do is basically go straight into the cut and jump a bunch of times to clear some of the off-road before using our mushroom. And in order to maximize the effectiveness of the strategy, we need to clear as much of the off-road as possible as quickly as possible. As you might have noticed, we built up a mini turbo before the first jump into the grass. But what makes this strat so tricky is that you must make sure that your mini turbo is not active by the time you touch down on the grass for the first time. If you're in the middle of your mini turbo boost when you touch the grass, it'll kill all your momentum. So if you look closely, you'll see that I timed this mini turbo jump out in such a way that my mini turbo boost actually runs out while I'm in midair, which is what lets me cut out so much of the off-road before using the mushroom. If you did it successfully, then you'll have to do about four hops before you start that right drift to make sure that you can buy enough time to mushroom through the rest of the cut. But if you did mess up and you killed all your momentum, you'll likely have to do an extra hop or two. Depending on your pace, you may or may not be able to trick off the drawbridge here. But in either case, when you come up to this next right turn, make sure that you do not do what you did on lap one. There will be some arrows here that tell you to turn to the right, but they're kind of obscured by the railing here, which makes them hard to react to. And I guarantee you that if you're not paying attention while you're learning this course, you're either gonna get lackitude or run into the wall at least once. But yeah, as long as you don't make that mistake, you should be able to basically just hard right drift around this turn to build up a super mini turbo. The rest of the track is pretty straightforward. Just ultra mini turbo around the next left turn and then super mini turbo around the right turn to finish the run. Now before checking out my current personal best, let's talk about the world record for a bit. They babyfied this track, which as we all know means more mini turbos and higher levels of mini turbo. This shows up at the very start of the run with a mini turbo trick off the planter instead of just the normal trick like we did. Note that this mini turbo trick is possible with Waluigi, but I found that for me, I could only get it by intentionally taking such a bad line that it actually ended up being slower. Now, nowhere is this babyfication of London more apparent than in the long straightaways at the start of sections two and three and before the mushroom cut in section three. No joke, when I was watching this runner for the first time, my left thumb started having spasms from imagining what it would be like to actually execute these strats in real time. Now let me elaborate on this point a bit more while we check out my current personal best. And by the way, this track took a really long time for me to learn, and I hope that some of these strategies were able to help you out. If so, one way to return the favor is by liking and commenting on this video to help it spread to more people. Thank you very much for that. Now London Loop. Before figuring out how to consistently get the chain chomp to leave me alone on lap two, and how to navigate the shortcut more effectively on lap three, I was more than six seconds off record. I'm still just a little bit less than five seconds off record now, which is not really that great, but I feel like I should start by defending myself a bit there. The strategies I use are mostly based on how the current Shroomless World Record runs the track, except for the fact that, you know, I use mushrooms in the same way that the world record does. My Shroomless personal best is only three seconds off the current Shroomless World Record, and so from that perspective, I feel like I have at least a decent understanding of how the track works, and I'm sure that a large chunk of the time difference between my run and the current world record is purely due to the fact that I'm using an inefficient build. Inefficient meaning that I'm not able to do a lot of the mini turbo strats. Anyways, that's enough defending myself from the legions of pro gamers who I'm sure are waiting in the wings to descend on my comment section in a fit of rage. Let's actually talk about my thoughts on London Loop for a bit. This track is long. It's longer than pretty much anything the original 48 tracks had to offer, although not quite as long as Waluigi Pinball. What's nice though is that the course doesn't feel that long, and that's because of how well designed it is. Yeah, there are a few areas where you're just driving straight with nothing else going on, but again, that's basically because I'm not good enough at the game yet to make those sections interesting myself. But even without all that, there's a lot of stuff to learn, and you never really feel comfortable enough to just go on autopilot. In my reaction video and in some of the footage that I had watched from Mario Kart Tour, I got the sense that the course was gonna be fairly straightforward and boring, but that is not at all the case. Now, if I had to nitpick, something that kind of annoys me about, well, all the city courses really, is that the arrows aren't a clear enough indication of where you need to go. It's especially bad on this course at the end of lap three, where they don't show up until it's already way too late for you to react. And I lost more than one run to just getting lackitude right there. I really wish that the city courses made it just a bit more obvious where exactly you're supposed to go, because losing runs in that sort of way just kind of sucks, to be honest. But all that being said, once you do learn the track, it's a lot of fun. I don't think I'd quite put it on the level of Sydney Sprint, but it's still an awesome course that will keep your blood flowing from start to finish. 
And that's everything you need to know to play London Loop on 150cc. Don't forget to drop a like on this video before you leave, and make sure to subscribe for more weekly Mario Kart tutorials. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.